Oh. Hello. Now, in honour of, and by honour of, I mean kind of inspired by, by which I mean plagiarising, ripping off Stanley Tucci, the wonderful Stanley Tucci, I'm going to show you um, cocktails, that's right, plural, cocktails that we have on a Friday um, here at Deering Towers. So, uh, yeah, not one but two cocktails to be made here today. I'm going to show you a Cosmopolitan and a vodka martini dirty. Okay, so first thing I would do is get these two lovely glasses really cold. I'm going to do it two different ways. So the uh, um, the uh, vodka martini, I'm going to put ice in the glass and let it sit in there because whisper it, we're sneaking a tiny bit of icy water into the vodka martini as it goes. Talking of vodka, I'm keeping the vodka in the freezer, excuse me, and uh, and because uh, it won't freeze, it will just stay liquid, but it will get lovely and cold and slightly viscous. I'm going to put the cosmopolitan glass into the freezer, let that chill for a minute, and uh, open this vodka, Stolich Nile. It's the best straightforward vodka. Nothing fancy about it, doesn't taste of anything unusual, but I find Smirnoff and Absolute and Russian Standard all taste a bit grubby, whereas Stolich Nile, lovely stuff. <laughs> I've got a little measure here, it's the uh, cap from the top of the cocktail shaker. But as long as you've got one measure, it doesn't matter what it is. I reckon what's that? That's like 25 milliliters or an ounce or, but it doesn't matter, does it? Because you can use an egg cup. As long as you use it for everything, it matches up. But you want, uh, okay, for um, the Cosmopolitan, it's two parts vodka. For the vodka martini, it's um, five. It's five parts vodka. So we're halving that because each of us is a single human. So um, the, uh, oh, and I need some ice. I've got, I can put this in some ice. So there's ice in here, chill in this glass and slightly melting. And now I need ice in this shaker here. And uh, um, I'm also gonna put some ice in this glass here. There's ice all over the world, much in the manner of uh, the way, I don't know, it's quite rocked. I know, there's ice everywhere here. And um, that's good because what you wanna do is get the, Vodka and uh, and so on, chilling. Right. So this is the uh, vodka for the vodka martini. We need two and a half. Right. So that's five parts, five half parts. Right. Two and a half. One, two of those, and a half. Just a little bit. I don't. I know. It sounds like an absolute booze hound, but that can be a kind of big half because as anyone who's ever made a martini will tell you, the thing that you want to do is not put too much vermouth in it. Right. With a gin martini, which is a proper martini, you want to whisper. A drizzle of vermouth. You want to shine a bright light through the vermouth. This is a martini extra dry. Again, pretty basic, but it's really good. So you don't need to get a fancy, expensive one. This one's going to work. Um, so I'm going to do half a cup of this, and it's uh, you know I'm going to be a little bit mean with that because heaven knows you don't want too much martini in the vodka. You see what I mean? It is a ridiculously strong drink, but that's the whole point. If I get it right, it's basically a massive glass full of vodka that tastes really smooth and nice. So it's like a kind of magic trick, and it. Feels like a magic trick. So that goes in there, and uh, and I leave that there for a while, and that's basically doing the work now. Um, that's the wrong lid. And uh, I'll quickly give the uh, um, shaker a little rinse, just so the cosmopolitan doesn't taste of the mousse, because that would be horrible. And then we go two parts in the cosmopolitan, which is two halves, which makes what's two halves? It's one. <laughs> Um, so that's it, that's, we put one vodka in here because my wife only drinks a sensible amount of booze. And uh, the next thing to do is to carry on making the cosmopolitan. So the rest of the cosmopolitan goes like this. You've got one, and stick with parts, two parts vodka, two parts cranberry. This is a common gun, a popular cranberry juice brand. And, uh, and great, really makes it nice, it doesn't need to be fancy. We went somewhere once where you couldn't get this because it's, like, it's all fresh ingredients so we'd need to squeeze some cranberries so you couldn't have a cosmopolitan. Thanks very much. Um, um, but yeah, this basic cranberry juice, wonderful because my wife suffers terribly with cystitis. <laughs> I'm only joking. Um, and one part, uh, lime juice. I've got half a lime right here. I didn't cut it specially, it was sitting in the bottom of the fridge. But it's quite fresh, darling, I'm sure. So uh, I squeeze this in. That's for, the great thing about um, a lime is it really is about one measure. So half a lime is, my guess, gonna sit about halfway up in the uh, measure there. I soon find out. Again, this is the ingredient, a bit like the vermouth, you want, if, it's, if there's any doubt, you want less of it rather more, it can come up a bit sharp. So that's a slightly mean half of lime, which is exactly what you want. And also, you need uh, one measure of, wait there, Oh, 
Quancho. <laughs> and what happens when the uh, warmth of the Quancho meets the ice of you English? The ice melts. Do you want a shag? It's a nine o'clock news sketch um, based on an advert from 30 to 40 years ago. Um, half, I'd say one part, half a measure of Quantro. Um, you don't know Quantro, so I'm just looking here. And it goes. And that is the Cosmopolitan Good to Go. And both of them actually, there's the third ingredient in the vodka martini, but that doesn't go in until after the mix up. And uh, that's everything in Cosmopolitan. So it's uh, two parts vodka, two parts cranberry, one part lime juice, one part quancho, and we're gonna shake it. This is five parts, I'm so ashamed of that. <laughs> five parts vodka and one part uh, vermouth, and I'm gonna stir that. Now, of course, everyone knows vodka martini, shake and not stirred, right? Ian Fleming said that. It's because he reckoned a stirred uh, martini had too much water in it, right? He wanted it cold, but he didn't want it full of water. But let's remember something. Ian Fleming, A, was a bit of a dirty sod. B, he lived in Jamaica in like 1950, right? So I don't know how good his fridge was, but I'm guessing that if, yeah, if you shake him uh, in vodka martini, it's gonna be, you know, if I do this, he'd have like a glass of water by now. Definitely stirred, mm. not shaken. You get too much water in it otherwise. Uh, or no, not enough water in it. That's how you want it, exactly. So you see this now, that's getting a little bit of water in it, that's getting a little bit, well, not much. Just a little bit, take the edge off. That's all we're saying. So, if you do go into a bar and say, like a vodka martini, um, shaken, not stirred, you might see the bar person go, oh yeah, shaken, not stirred, because it's, a, it's not a good thing to do. So, I'm gonna stir that, and I'm gonna shake this. And it's gonna be noisy, so sorry about this. This is okay to shake. In fact, I'm gonna shake it hard enough that you're kind of breaking up the ice, smashing the ice to bits in the cosmopolitan. And yes, I am an ambidexter. <laughs> so I'm going to leave that in there for a second because I serve that up once the uh, uh, martini is ready and not before. Vodka martini with olives, that's what I'm going to have. If I say vodka martini dirty, you should know it's with olives because the dirtiness comes from the water the olives are in. It's amazing how often bars get this wrong. Um, it should be, it needs to be olives in brine. Yeah, you need salty water. And sometimes they'll mess with that a little bit, like pimento stuffed olives. That's a bit wrong, but fair enough. But several times we've been in high-end bars, and they said, oh yeah, we'll get some olives. And they're like fancy herbed uh, olives in a kind of oil with bits of rosemary and stuff. And if you put that in a cocktail, it's basically like trying to drink a bolognese. It's disastrous. So uh, olives in brine, that's what's <laughs> gonna go in there. And this ice, that's... Mm. Oh, oh. You leave that too long, they'll freeze to them. You think, oh, I'll get those out, and then that'll smash, and you end up <laughs> slashing your own wrists. So that's fine, they go in there. Um, and this goes, got this, got that, that's, that's proper. Yeah. And that goes on the top of there, so you don't need to use a shaker. And this is basically the pure vodka martini. Again, you can make it with gin, it does really work, but it's different. It's diff obviously a different kind of flavour, and you would need less uh, vermouth. And then you add either an olive or olives. I think an, an olive I would do if it was gin, but more go crazy on the olives when it's vodka. And uh, it's also a martini if you do it with lemon peel. Uh, James Bond, the Vespa James Bond does, is both. It's gin and vodka and lemon peel and olives and misogyny and <laughs> outdatedness. So that's all in there. But I'm going straight with the, yeah, so it's olives or, and lemon also works. The key thing with the lemon though, and we'll come back to this, it's all about the zest. You're not looking for lemon juice, you want a curl of the peel to squidge it so a little bit of the oil comes out of the peel. And that's the equivalent, that will give you that take the edge off in the same way that the brine is gonna take the edge off in my one. So that's two olives and all the water that comes with them. And two olives and all the water that comes with them. I'd say that's already dirty with that. And then if you add that, like just water, just as brine, that's really dirty. And if you put that in, it's so dirty, it shouldn't be allowed. <laughs> um, and like, yeah, similarly, if you have it, uh, what do you call it? It's Gibson, that's right. If you have a little pickled onion, a silver skin pickled onion, pop that in. It's not a vodka anymore, it's a Gibson. And, uh, uh, sorry, vodka martini anymore. Um, but the key thing is the stuff that comes with it. So a little pickled onion there brings its vinegar. The olives bring their salt water or their bolognese sauce, if you're in that bar in Edinburgh we went to. Um, <laughs> or, you know, you have your lemon with its uh, nice or tasty zesty oils from the wax. Or you can have more teaser in it, and that's called a plop plop special. Um, <laughs> fun for you at least. Um, so that's done. That's ready to go. So we can get the other thing out there. We've got them nicely. It should be nicely chilled. 
this glass, this kind. Now the cosmic Bolton's ready too. <laughs> You're okay. Um, give it that another little shake. That's in there for a while. Cosmic Bolton can be served with orange, but again, it's really unnecessary. I don't think that uh, we well, know we don't do it in this house. Um, don't need any orange peel around here, but you don't need orange in the drink. You don't need orange juice in it. Do you know what I mean? You don't need orange juice. You don't need a bit of orange that's got juice in it. It's all about the peel. If you want to add peel at this stage, take a curl of the zest and then um, you know put it on the edge of the glass. And the cool thing you can do is squidge the zest and just light it. And get a few sparks, firework night. A few sparks, a little bit of zest oil burnt on the top of the cosmopolitan, which is a real faff, and you'll burn your hands. And she doesn't like it, so we're not doing it. And these are a cosmopolitan and a dirty vodka martini. Happy Friday, cocktails. Here's to you, Stanley Tucci.